It's awesome to hear these testimonies, and, I'm, and this is my first time actually hearing uh, what God has been doing in our church. And this, this to tell you that you are in the right place at the right time. Amen, church? Turn to your neighbor, tell them you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. We believe that as Vladimir has spoke this uh, morning and being committed and consistent in church, and this is where you are blessed, this is where you are healed, and this is where you are delivered in this place. So we continue to encourage you, be committed to a church, be consistent with church, and see where God will take you from wherever you are to a place where God wants you to be, into the real you that God has created you, man. Amen, church? Uh, this morning, we just want to go straight into our message. Our pastor is absent today, but we believe that you will be blessed today as you hear some of the examples from the Word of God and some things that, um, that uh, some principles from the Bible. So if you have your, the, the Bibles with you, let us open uh, today to Genesis 37, verses 17 through 19. And it says this, So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now when they saw him afar off even before he came near them they conspired against him to kill him then they said to one another look this dreamer is coming this morning i want to uh, share a small message with you uh titled everything big starts small everything big starts small our church is, is known for, for this title because in the beginning when we first, as I remember 15 or 16 years ago, when we came to America, this was our life. You know, when we came, we had nothing. Our pastor was the one that came and he, at the moment, he barely had anything, you know, no language, no money, you know, no people to surround with him. And that was his life and that was something that he lived upon. That he understood one principle that if anything must grow, it must start in the weak form. If anything must happen, it first has to start with a dream. If you believe in, in your life for anything that God wants you to do in your life, it all has to begin with a dream in your life. You have to have a dream in your, in your heart, inside your mind, knowing that this is what God wants you to be. This is what God wants you to have. This is where God wants you to reach. If you do not have a dream, you will not be able to live that life that God has for you. If you are waiting for a place or a time where life will just happen, life will just happen. Things will just break down. Things will not work out. And you know how things happen. You know it will be chaos. Just like it was in the beginning. It will be chaos. There will be darkness. And your life without, will be without void and without form. If we wait for life to happen, our life will be filled with darkness. There will be no reason for living. There will be no purpose for living. Because your life must begin with a dream inside your heart. Everything big is start small. And that small thing is a dream inside your heart. Every single person, when God created every single person, he created a blueprint inside your heart. And that is the dream where God wants you to, to reach. You know, looking back, you know, and when our pastor, when he came here to America, you know, it was a dream that God has placed in his heart to be able to see multicultural church, to be able to see a church where God's power is moving, where, where our church is being filled with different types of races, different cultures, you know, uh, our young people being risen up to be able to preach in English. We have our own TV show, we have our podcast, we'll have um, our website, we'll have, you know, our pastors will be traveling all over the world. It was a dream that our pastor had, but it was so small because our pastor had nothing. But one thing that he had is he had a dream. And today, me and you are celebrating that dream because our pastor's focus was not broken. That dream was not lost inside his heart, but he kept on believing that this is what God wants us to have. And one day, it will come to pass. If anything in your life must begin, it must begin in a weak form. And that is a dream inside your heart. We see in the story of Joseph that we read you know, Joseph being a small, you know, being, being a small guy, being a, a, a small brother, you know, and he comes and one day just begins to have a dream and he begins to share his dream. It's like, 
It becomes so small and so insignificant, yet he believes that this is, that everything that he has, this is a dream that one day the stars, the moon, begin to bow down to him and he holds on to the dream and he knows that this is everything that I got. Your, your, your dream, you, your life will begin with the dream and I want to tell you one thing that your dreams cannot be small. You cannot just dream of a life that is just mediocre, like just something that is small, something that is insignificant. Oh, I'll just have a regular job. I'll just, you know, just come to church and visit. You know, if I might get sick, you know, this is the will of God for my life. But your life has to have a big dream. It may start in the, it may start in the weak form. It may look insignificant to you, but you have to have a dream that is way beyond your reality. Because our reality is, you know, you, you grow up, you get a job, you graduate, you know, you, you get married, you do this, you know, this is, a, you know, this is some people, this is a dream, you know, an American dream. Just get a house, get married, have kids and die. But I'm talking about a dream that God has given inside your heart. A dream that one day that you will not only you be saved but you also begin to save others. A dream of that not just you know my family has you know this sickness going on and one day that I will that sickness will not kill me but have a dream that I will be a healthy person that I will live my life without a sickness without a pain that is in the way where God has created me. To have a dream, not that I'll just have a job, but one day I'll be given out jobs. The one day I'll just be given out jobs, I'll be given out cars, I'll be giving out houses, I'll be building orphanage, I'll be building rehab centers. That is the dream that I'm talking about. Not just the dream that you yourself be saved, but one day you'll open a home group. One day that you'll not just have one home group, but you'll have 12 home groups that you'll be releasing, that you'll be an influence to those people in your community. That is the dream that I'm talking about. It might be at the moment that you think that this dream is just, is, it's the only thing I have. It looks small and it's insignificant, but everything big, it starts small. It starts little and all begins with the dream. But the dream that you're going to have, I challenge you that you're not going to have a small dream, but you have a big dream that it only can come to pass with God. The moment you believe that you can accomplish your own dream, it's not a dream. A dream that we're talking about that is only possible with God. And that is what happened with Joseph's life. His dream was not a dream that he was, he was a small boy. He was somebody who was insignificant. But his dream was so big that he knew that I cannot accomplish it by myself. But only can do it with God. Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Yonggi Cho said one thing that if you do not have any dreams, the Holy Spirit is not with you. And that is true. When you come to know God, when you come to know the Holy Spirit, first thing that Holy Spirit places in your life is a dream. To be able to believe for more. To be able to believe that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. To be able to believe that you'll be on top and not on the bottom. To believe that you and your family shall serve the Lord. To believe that you will be able to be an influence to your generation. That you win souls and make disciples. To believe that, that in the last days that God will pour out a spirit upon all flesh. That you will have dreams. That you have visions. This is a dream the Holy Spirit deposits it in your life when you come to know Him. So if your life is without dreams and it's without visions, you do not have the Holy Spirit. Your life has to have a dream. You must believe that one day you may not be able to speak at this moment. Maybe you're not, you know, an eloquent in speech. Maybe at this moment you're still paying off your debts. Maybe at this moment, you know, you, you do not have a relation, but you have a dream inside your heart. When you come to know the Holy Spirit, He will give you a dream that is only possible with God. Everything big, it starts small. Uh, uh, Kobe Bryant, if you can put up his, uh, he said that each moment of my life, I was dreaming of how great I could be. And I continue working hard each time I close my eyes, I can only see me shining bright in the sun. And today you see that he, he reached and he made a, a, to a place what others only dream of. But it all started with the dream that he always would dream. Every time he would close his eyes, he would see himself shining as bright as the sun. And you might think that, you know, this is, this is like, 
This is prideful. This is selfish. But that is what Holy Spirit wants for every single person here today. If you come in today and, and your dreams have been shattered uh, away in, the, you know, in this life, you know, you've been, you've been maybe divorced, you maybe went through bankruptcy, maybe you've been sick constantly and your life has been shattered into pieces and you are doubting your dream. You may be doubting what God has placed in your life. Let me tell you one thing, that your dreams can be restored at the cross of Calvary. When you come to know Jesus Christ, when you come and give your life to Jesus Christ, He can restore every dream. He can give you the brand new dream that maybe you never had to believe that God can do all things that with your God nothing and nothing is impossible amen church I remember one um, when I used to be uh, in Ukraine I went to this pastor's conference with my dad like it was just like when I was I'm thinking like six probably I was six I was just you know just walking be able to realize what money is so because I would beg my parents a lot for money and they didn't have any and I remember I went to that conference I was walking between the aisles my dad was up front and I was running around and I was running running I, I ran across and I saw a dollar bill on the floor now back in the day that was 1995 a dollar in Russia was a lot of money at that time it was a lot of money I remember I was running I found the dollar and I looked around and I'm like somebody left the dollar and everybody's worshiping everybody's like thank you Jesus so like thank you Jesus too <laughs> I see this dollar on the floor. I pick it up and I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like, whose dollar is it? And everybody's worshiping. I'm like, well, it's mine. <laughs> and I, I begin to walk there and I'm, I'm holding the doll. Never seen a dollar in my life. But I know it's a dollar. I, I know it's a dollar. See, it was a Benjamin Franklin or whatever it is on that dollar. And I'm just holding that thing. I'm, I'm like, back in my mind, I'm like, a bike would be legit. You know, I'm picturing myself going to the store and just yeah give me my thing you know just purchasing something and and at that time in my heart I was like I'm gonna give this give this dollar to to when they gonna ask for offering inside my heart at that time I was like man I dream of one day be able to give so much money and it was like at that time a dream was birthed inside my heart I wanted I mean the dollar to a six-year-old at in Russia at that time it's a lot of money could have bought myself so much things and and, you know, at that time, I'm like, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to give it to the offering. And, and from that day, I remember till, till today, from that day, I've dreamed of living a life, of being able to give great things to God. To be able to live a life, not just, you know, that I'm, I'm so rich and I'm collecting all these, all these money, but to live a life where I am giving huge things to God. Be able to, to tithe a lot, to be able to, to give away cars, to be able to give away houses. And that day, a dream was birthed. And same thing that happens with each and one of you in this place. God has gives you guys a dream but when we go through life certain things begins to wash out certain things begin to to fade colors and you know life happens and dreams fade away but I want to tell you this morning that at the cross of Calvary your dreams can be resurrected maybe you have never had a dream at the cross of Calvary you can get a brand new dream for your life to believe for more to believe a life like pastor was talking this Wednesday of more than enough to believe for a best life even though you might have a past but the cross of calorie gives us a place where we can dream again where we can have a dream that is not possible with men but can be possible with God amen church come on put your hands together for Jesus Christ and and to 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 my to my ability to, to my surprise uh, you know dreaming this life though to be able to give great things you know this week I was I was even able to give away a car you know, to, for us, it was, uh, you know, for me, my wife was, a, was the best car that we had. We have, a, we have a Toyota Corolla and Christmas lights are shining on the dashboard. And <laughs> you stop in the stop like, <laughs> come on. You know, it's, you're a Toyota. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to work good. And, you know, and I was able to fulfill that dream this week. And I was looking back, you know, and I was praying. I was seeing that God was showing the picture that when I was at that six-year-old, a dream was birthed in my heart. To be able to give more than enough. To be able to live a lifestyle where I can, you know, I'm believing to one day to give a house away. To be able to sponsor somebody's college tuition. To be able to live a life where you are living at your best. Not just living a life from paycheck to paycheck, but living a life of more than enough. And that is a life that God wants you to have every single person in this place. Amen, church? This is a life of a dream. And it, 
can be restored at the cross of Calvary. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. Your dream that you, that you see may be so huge and that you think that what you have now in your life is, is nothing. You might think, you know, you just might have a, a job that is just paying for your bills and you know, and you, you may look at your dream and you see the dream is just so huge and what you have now is just so small that you're like, I don't know if it's possible. Don't despise the day of small beginnings because everything that starts, that's going to become big first starts in the weak form. Everything, every great basketball player, every hero that ever became who they are, at one day they were at a weak form. They were, they were fragile. They were, they were at a place where they were not just, you know, not running. They were just maybe crawling. They're just learning how to get back up. And that is a place where you cannot abandon. And Zechariah uh, 4 verse 10 says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. The Lord is happy when you begin to take small steps towards your dream. Maybe you're believing for a home group and at this day you, you never brought anybody to church. Don't despise the day of small beginnings when you go to your work and you begin to witness. Maybe nobody comes when you begin to tell them about God. But don't give up. Don't abandon. Don't begin to abort the dream that God has placed inside your heart. Because one day you will become a home group leader. One day you have more than just one home group leader. You have 12 home group leaders that will begin to change our community. They begin to change our schools. They begin to change the family trees. And that day will come. But don't abort the dream because what you have inside your heart right now is small or insignificant. You know, I'm looking back and I remember, you know, when my, I remember when our dad, uh, our pastor, my dad, when the church was just beginning and we were in our duplex in Richland. And I remember, you know, how, how emotionally my, my, my dad was just hurt. He was just, it was in such a pain where, you know, he was just like, I want to start a church. You know, I believe that God's going to do great things. And I remember at times where he would come home and he was, he would not be happy. He would go downstairs to um, our basement he would just lock himself and pray and said and I remember sometimes listening you know God said he was saying God I don't know if it's possible and I remember hearing that and I just he was just kept pressing kept pressing kept pressing and all at that time that our, our pastor had was just young teenagers just a bunch of young kids who were just doing ridiculously dumb things you know, it just ridiculously. But that was a day of small beginnings and a pastor believed. A pastor stood upon the dream that God has placed in his heart to believe for more. To believe that, look, with man, it's not possible. Only God can do it. And today, me and you are standing and sitting here as a result of one man's dream. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. How much more people today will be changed because of the dream in your heart. You know, I'm always thinking, I'm like, how many people went through our church, you know, in the past, how many years that we've been existing? But how much people can be influenced through my life? If, 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 a, if, a, if our pastor who did not speak any English, who did not have any money, who did not have any support, was able to influence so many people, how much more can I do when I do speak English, when God has given me education, when God has given me money, when God has given me influence, God has given us authority and all these things where we're taught with the, we have so many mentors. How many lives can I impact with my dream? Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Number two is small dreams, small suffering, big dreams, big suffering. Small dreams have small suffering. Big dreams have big suffering. You guys have to understand one thing. You will suffer anyways. You will suffer anyways. You, you cannot avoid it. If you dream small, you will suffer small. If you dream big, you will suffer big. But with big suffering, you have to understand dreams come true. Dreams come true. Even if you believe small dreams, they will still come to pass. With those small dreams, you will experience small suffering. With the bigger dreams, you will experience bigger suffering. And we see in the life of Joseph, we see how 
with side his heart he didn't just believe that oh I'll just be you know I'll just take over my father you know my father loves me everything is good I'm just gonna have a family get married but he believed with a big dream and from that big dream he went through betrayal he began to to have you know pain from his brothers he was sold into slavery then he went to prison but from that prison he was elevated to become a prime minister this to show you that dreams come to pass so if you have a dream inside your heart, do not just dream small. Don't just dream things that you can accomplish yourself. Dream a dream that only God can come and bring to pass in your life. Amen? Suffering is a guide, your personal guide to a successful life. When you begin to experience suffering in your life, you'll understand one thing, that you are on the right path. Good seas never made a, a great sailor. Just to show you that when times are tough, when times are, are just are not easy because of the dream that you have inside of your heart, they are your guide to show you you are in the right path. You are doing the right thing. When people, people begin to, to persecute you because of the, the righteous things that you're doing, of the things that you're standing for God, you believe for a home group, maybe your family's like, you're crazy, you know what you're doing, you spend, need to spend more time with family, you know, you, you, you are totally different, you're abandoning us, da, da, da. You might experience some suffering at that time, but you have to understand that great dreams will require you to go through suffering. Great dreams that God has given in your heart has placed inside your heart will require you to go through that wilderness before before you will encounter the promised land but another thing you have to understand also that not every suffering not every suffering is a good suffering there are some suffering where are like in Egypt where Israelites were just being slaves and there was no point for that suffering and there's the other suffering where Israelites were in the wilderness, but that suffering had a purpose for them for the promised land. There's certain sufferings that we have in our lives where we where we do it to ourselves. Where we where we, for example, if we begin to smoke, that will cause us to be sick, our lungs will be you know affected, and that's a suffering that you will bring upon yourself. But there's other sufferings that, for example, that you might be, you know, you're going after God, you're serving God, and all of a sudden a devil attacks you. There's an attack upon your life. You become sick, and you know that you're good with God. You're standing with God. That suffering has a purpose to better your relationship with God. There's a suffering where we go and we max out our debit cards, our, our credit cards, and everything. We get into debt, and then we pay our whole life paying off that debt. There's other suffering where we choose to become poor so we can live a better life where we give away cars, where we give away jobs, where we, you know, sow into other people's lives, where we choose to become, at, for a temporary time, to become poor so somebody else's life will become rich. And that is a suffering with a purpose. You know, there's a suffering where, you know, your, your friends are, are enjoying, are they, they are, you know, they're partying, they're doing something else. But you are praying here on a Friday night, on, a, on, a, on a every day in the morning prayer. You're battling for your generation. That is a suffering that might, you might think it's a suffering, but that suffering has a purpose. It is a suffering when you don't get enough sleep. I'm telling you. <laughs> Latimer many times like, brother, wake up. <laughs> I wake up though. And that, that's... You know, but you see the fruit of that. There's a suffering where you, where you are encounter tough times, where you stand in the gap and you believe that God will come through and that suffering has a purpose for your life because there is a promised land at the other hand. But there's a suffering that we do for ourselves where our mentors tell us, you should not be in that, in that relationship. No, I just believe it's right and it hurts, but I'm just going to do it. And then the day, end of the day, we end up hurt. And that's not the suffering that we're talking about. That suffering has no purpose. You learned the lesson, yes, but you can learn it with one stab without, or, or two, you know. So there is a purpose for our suffering, but it has to be the right type of suffering. There's a purpose when we suffer like Israel in the wilderness because there's a promise line coming. Or there's a suffering where Israelites are just being slaves to in Egypt. So we have to understand that every suffering is a good suffering. So we need to choose our sufferings with care. You know that, it, yes, it is hard to, to come in the mornings to pray. And, and at times it's challenging, it's a sacrifice. But know but that this suffering, this sacrifice, this, this time where you come and you spend it for God, it has a fruit at the end. But there's suffering where you can uh, go to the gym in the morning and skip morning prayer. And later on you'll be devastated or your life. So <laughs> Hardships are not a sign of sin 
nor prosperity a sign of holiness. Hardships are not a sign of sin, nor sin. Uh, hardships are not a sign of sin, nor is prosperity a sign of holiness. And we see that in the life of Job, you know, where he, he was sick. He was, at the moment, he lost everything. But it was a time where he was with God. And at the end of that suffering, you know, at the end of that, you know, a hardship time, God has given him more than he can handle. And also we see that those people who, who gain the whole world yet lose their own soul. So you cannot say that, you know, because I have everything in my life means that, you know, I'm living a life of holiness. I'm living a life that is righteous before God. And not every time where you lose everything, you begin to think that you're so far from God. Because hardships are not a sign that you are going through, you know, that you are in sin. Yes, we should look in our life to expect our life so we can come closer to God. But those are not the signs. In, in our Bible, Romans 8, 28 says that we, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. Know that in everything that we go through, in the sufferings that we are facing, when we suffer for Christ's sake, God will make all things work together for our good. Will make work together for your good, for whatever you're believing in your life. And number three is every season has a coat. We see in, um, in Joseph's life, like, uh, as we read, that he first started off as being a son. He first started off with God, where Abraham or his father has given him a coat and it was a colorful coat. But he came to a point where his brothers has stripped him of that coat and gave him a coat of being a slave. We see at the time where he was a slave, he was going through that time. And, and at that time where he was a slave, a coat of being a slave was put on him. But then from being a slave, he was elevated it being a porter for his house. So the coat of being a slave was stripped for him. It was given another coat. Also, he was at his Potiphar's house. He was, everything was going good until temptation came and his wife accused him. And that coat was also stripped for him and he went to prison. And, and then uh, uh, one who was a, who was a uh, crime, what's the, what's the word for it? Who was in, um, when you're convicted of some, something, convict. A, a coat of convict was, was put on him in, in, a, in a prison cell. But also that code did not last because when, when he started to interpret dreams, that coat of being somebody who does the crime was stripped from him also. And it was also after that elevated to a place where he became a prime minister. What we want to see from his life is that every season has a coat and we should not be attached to our coats. Certain people might take your coat from you. Maybe you are going through a, a season where you have not enough. Don't stay attached to that coat. Make sure that the main thing is the main thing that your relationship with God remains the same through every season that you go through. Every season requires different quotes. Every season requires. But one thing that should remain from that is that our relationship with God never changes. Yes, Joseph was a son. He loved God. He believed in God. Yes, Joseph was sold, sold into slavery. He still kept on being and having a relationship with God. He then went to being in, into uh, Potiphar's house. He still had a relationship with God because when he was tempted, he knew that it wasn't right before God. Then from there, he went to prison cell. He still believed in God. His relationship with God always remained the same. And once he was elevated to being prime minister, his relationship with God still remained the same. Your seasons might change. Your coats might change. There may be a coat that was, that was taken from you. It might be stripped from you. But let your relationship with God remain the same. Let your relationship with God be in a level where, where you might go down. You might go up. But your love for God always and always grows. But it never goes back. Prophet T.B. Joshua says that our enemies may be able to separate us from the presence of our friends. From the presence of our people, from the presence of a country, but they cannot separate us from the presence of God. Our enemies may strip us of our outward prestige and beauty, but the wisdom and the grace of God cannot take us from God. Our enemies may confine us to a prison cell and rob us of our liberty, but they cannot shut us out from the throne of mercy and our communion with God. 
we may go through seasons in life just like just like Joseph we may go through highs and lows we may go through a time where you know where we are where we're comfort comforted in our in our season where everything's going good and and you are about to to go to your next season and you're attached to this coat of you know of just warming the pew but the next season is that you need to invite friends you need to become a home group leader you need to step out of that that coat you need to leave that coat behind you need to become to to a place where God wants it to be to not to be attached to your season not to be attached to your colorful coat to believe that God has a better place for you that God has a better place than Potiphar's house God has a better place for you than a prison cell God has a better place for you and that is being at the prime minister to place where God has created you the real you the God that has created of your dreams you know to be a successful person not to be a person that is on the bottom but a person on the top not a person that is constantly fighting sickness but a healthy person fighting sickness a, a person that has an influence that has not just you know a people that you bring to church but you open up your own home group that you become a successful person maybe you're believing for a relationship God has a place for you of you know having a wonderful marriage of becoming a building a great family that is a dream that God has for you everything big is start small don't let your dreams be small dreams and let your dreams be dreams where they only require God to make them come to pass. Amen church? Come on put your hands together for Jesus Christ.